Hi, another short uh, video presentation uh, which will be going up onto YouTube to uh, help you in your quest for the truth. And this one's all about breaking presumptions. The law is all about presumptions. And if we know that a Roman court does not operate according to any true rule of law, but by presumptions of the law, then it's going to help us to... Uh, uh, to crack the code that they are using against us. Therefore, when we receive presentments from the private bar guild and do not rebut them, they become fact and are said to stand as the truth or the truth in law. Here we go. We look at, look at what a presentment is. The act of presenting to view or to the mind something expressed, presented or exhibited. The light in which something is presented, and now in law, the act of submitting or presenting a formal statement of a legal matter to a court or an authorised person, the report written by a grand jury concerning an offence and based on the jury's own knowledge and observation. Now, this is the one we want. Three, the act of presenting a bill or a note for payment. So now you can see that anything that they present to you uh, being court documents, uh, rates demand, uh, uh, traffic tickets, or anything like that, are uh, only presentment. And there, section three, now this is from Bovier's online dictionary. Uh, it pays uh, when you're learning law to go online, click on Bovier's online or Black's online law dictionary, and this is where you'll find the true meanings to the words that we're going into. So, the act of presenting a bill or a note for pa uh, for payment, this is telling you what those things you receive in the mail actually are. They're just a bill or a note for payment. So don't be afraid of them because this video is going to help you to get uh, a clearer understanding of what these presentments are. Now, the people who present them to us belong to this organization. It's called the Private Bar Guild. Uh, once again, do a Google do a Google Act, put Private Bar Guild into uh, into Google, and this is what you'll come up with. The Bar Guilds are, are the direct descendants of the Florentine, Venetian, and London Guilds of the Middle Ages that used merchant trading principles to commercialize law and personally profit from crime as demonstrated by the history of courts and their literal meaning. What they're telling you there is that um, the courts are a private company and they're just giving you presentments or bills for payment. And if you know how to pay them, you can pay them off correctly. But if you don't know how to pay them, we'll show you in this demonstration how to rebut their presumptions. OK, so the bar guilds now control almost 100 percent of judicial assemblies around the world in the worst example of organized crime in the history of civilization. OK, so what they're telling you in this, uh, this is a Google quote that I picked up on the Internet. They're telling you that they're just an organized criminal bunch trying to raid you. So if you know who they are, you can help to. Uh, break the presumption that they have some sort of control over you. So what is a presumption? Presumption, a rule of law which permits a court to assume a fact is true until such time as there is a preponderance of evidence which disproves or outweighs, there we go, there rebuts, the presumption. So unless you rebut that presumption, they're going to the, assume that the fact is true. So each presumption is based upon a particular set of apparent facts paired with established laws, logic, reasoning, or individual rights. A presumption is rebuttable in that can be rebutted by factual evidence. One can present facts to persuade the judge that the presumption is not true. Now, it's quite easy to rebut that when you know who you are. So you need to establish that fact pretty quickly rebut the fact and they they have no control over you. The next thing to remember is that he who makes the claim must prove it. So you don't want to be making any claims. You want to be uh, 
uh, asking questions. When you ask questions, then they, if they've made a claim against you, you ask a question and they must prove it. So when a summons or claim is sent to you, don't panic. Don't be concerned. It's only an offer. And if you accept it as that, soon you will start to have a totally different outlook on the law. You'll stop your worrying. Okay. This is an example of an offer I received recently. Okay. Now, on the top line there, you'll notice you were advised that a judgment for unpaid rates was entered against you in the district court at Manukau. Okay. So now I've talked about rebutting. We've seen what presentment is. Now we need to look at what rebutting is. So rebuttal is evidence introduced to counter, dispro disprove or contradict the opposition's evidence or a presumption or responsive legal argument. So what they're telling you is, and this is once again is from Bovier's Online Law Dictionary, evidence introduced to rebut a presumption or to contradict a presumption. Okay, so learning these words, you will stop all the fear that's going through your brain at the moment and start to act against them. Now we need to look through the letter for any presumptions that we need to rebut. Now I did read the first part of the letter out to you and this is what we're going to rebut. You are advised that a judgment for unpaid rates was entered against you in the district court at Manukau on 13th of December 2006. Now, if you look at that carefully, it wasn't entered against Bill, it was entered against you. So we are now going to rebut that presumption. Well, hopefully we are. The letter was addressed to John Doe, or to Bill, but the first sentence addresses you, because the judgment wasn't made against John Doe or Bill, it was made against you. You were advised that a judgment for unpaid rates was entered against you in the district court at Manukau. Now, is that me? Oh, sorry, is that Bill or is that uh, John Doe? I don't think so. Properly, you is indeed a plural. Yet the word you is often spoken as if it were in reference to a singular man or woman. In such instances, the word you induces a natural inclination for everyone in the audience to hear it as being addressed singularly or to themselves, particularly if the word you follows an antecedent noun. All right, so understanding that, you will start to get a picture of what's going to happen. The letter was very clear, very clear that the judgment was entered against you. And what the court now needs is for John Doe or Bill to accept that he is you. Or in other words, that the judgment was entered against John Doe or Bill or whoever, whomever. This may sound simplistic and absurd, but that is exactly what the courts want us to think. The law always has and always is very precise, which is why we must be precise. Never presume anything. Always question. Always, always, always question. Otherwise, you are going to have a problem. So now we must rebut that we are you. Quite simply, we write back to whoever gave us the kind presentment. And this is what we say now. First of all, I'm doing this letter in a large font so that you can see it a lot more clearly. And then I'll put the whole letter as one. Okay, so up the top you'll note that I have private in big red letters. You must write to them privately. Mr. Registrar, and we address it to Mr. Registrar or to whomever in their private capacity. And we say, Dear Sir, we thank Mr. Registrar for his correspondence, which we received today, the 1st of the 1st, 2007, uh, 2013. There appears to be a mistake, as although the correspondence was sent to John Doe, the judgment was against you. Would Mr. Registrar in his private capacity kindly confirm who you is and or forward this correspondence to you? And then we serve notice on him. Failure by Mr. Registrar in his private capacity to respond within 10 days from receipt of this correspondence shall constitute 
legal accord and satisfaction of all claims. Now, you may want to Google legal accord and satisfaction because it's a very, very powerful um, uh, operation of law. Now, here we've separated the parties. Uh, we've made the crown. We've got the sovereign and we've got the private person's personal representative. Now, those parties, I'm not going to go into it too deep in this um, in this presentation, but you will see uh, that uh, the sovereign is CD, the private person's personal representative is AB, and you do it before two witnesses. Now, that CD, AB, GH, and JK comes straight out of the Bills of Exchange Act, so you may want to have a look at that also. Now, here's the letter as one. I've just made it in a smaller font so that you can see it, it the two parts and the uh, the bottom, all as one. Okay, should we ignore, argue, or fail to rebut any of their kind offers, then we are in big trouble. And I can assure you, you are. You must. You must rebut. Otherwise, an adhesion contract takes effect between the real man and the John Doe, John Doe Trust. And this is where we become the customer. We become you. Okay, an adhesion contract, once again from both years, a contract so imbalanced in favor of one party over the other that there is a strong implication that it was not freely bargained. Now, an adhesion contract because we, we do not understand what an a, um, adhesion contract is, the moment we accept that you is us, or you is a bill, or you is John Doe, then we become, we have an adhesion contract, and we become a party to it. Now, do you think that that is freely bargained? I don't believe it is, but it goes on further. There is nothing unenforceable or even wrong about adhesion contracts. Well, I think there is. I don't think, I don't think we have been given full disclosure of those contracts. So I don't believe that it is freely bargained. But then again, the courts say, well, there's nothing unenforceable or even wrong about adhesion contracts. So take your pick on that, guys. Once they have an adhesion contract, they can proceed to prosecution quite simply as by our failure to rebut the claim that John Doe was you, the court now sees John Doe as you and as one and the same. Oh dear. <clears throat> so the first letter that they, or presentment that they sent us, and this could be from anyone, whoever is demanding money from you is sending out these adhesion contracts to you. Is the so the first one is the adhesion contract to bind the parties as one. Now once they once the once we have accepted that we are you, and we are the name, then we have an adhesion contract. Their second letter or presentment is to make the claim that you are causing them damage, and they will they will send you a letter to that effect. The third letter of presentment <clears throat> is the judgment. Unless you do something at this stage and rebut all their presumptions, they can now proceed to the court to enforce that judgment. All they need to show the judge is that they have, have observed the right process. Now, this is all it is. It's simply a process of law. Do not be afraid to use the same process against them also. You can use exactly the same process against um uh, any debt collectors or anything, uh, anyone who sends these things to you. It is lawful and it is your right to do so. So don't be afraid. Lose your fear and start doing these things. Okay, what the courts rely on is our lack of knowledge and fear. So hopefully these little, present, uh, these little uh, videos I'm doing will help you in your knowledge and also in losing your fear. Empower yourself with knowledge and the belief that what you're doing is right because it is your right and the only way that you can enforce your rights is by standing up and doing something about it. So 
I now wish you good luck in your search for the truth.